This is your Sports On Demand for February 1st, a Thursday. I'm Mike Ludlum. Let's go to college basketball. The 17th ranked Michigan Tech women took on number 24 Grand Valley State. We're going to pick this up in quarter number three. Lindsay Winter inside the Brenna Heisey turns, bounces it in off the window. She had 16 points and 10 rebounds. Under 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Heisey to Winter for three. Lakers led though 52-46 after 30 minutes. Winner had 14 to the fourth. Hannah Stoll knocks down one of her three triples. That one gave Tech the lead. She had 15. Cassidy Trotter had six big points off the bench. Two here plus the foul. And Tech outscored Grand Valley 22-9 in the fourth quarter. The win 68-61. Tech is 11-3 in the GLIAC. The Lakers are 10-3. NMU, the women taking on Purdue Northwest. We'll start in the first quarter. Sydney Dillinger, Lexi Smith, one hands the jumper home. The Wildcats are off and running. Next, Smith, Taylor O'Dell, back to Smith, behind the elbow, and knocks down the triple. Smith again to Hodell, and Hodell finds Tess Weatherly in the corner, and she reigns a three pointer to keep the Wildcats in front. Smith will score again from Aaron Hunkala. NMU goes on to win 63-55. Back up to Michigan Tech against Grand Valley. Brian Heath first half. Rattles one in off the rim to get things in progress. Then Ewan Trout Creek's Dylan Gordon. 1.2. Uh, I can't even keep track of the number of bounces. He had 10 points. Second half action. Hunter Hale. Yes, he was raining threes as well. He ended up with 24 points and 10 rebounds. Not there, though. Isaac Apple, or yeah, Isaac Apple beat the volleyball slam. Kyle Monroe, no. A.J. Grizzoulis, yes. And the foul, he had eight points and eight rebounds. Then Appleby, Monroe, National Player of the Week, had 22. Appleby, Monroe, a Larry Bird-esque pass to Brian Heath for the layup and the foul. Under 10 seconds to go. Shot clock winding down. Monroe misses. And then Grand Valley is trying to get off a shot down two. But the layup is short just before the buzzer. And the Huskies hang on to win 77-75. Back to the Barry Event Center for the Pride and the Wildcats. Pick this one up in the second half. Isaiah Johnson driving and scoring. He had 18. Short time later, Johnson... Will be drawing the defense. Then he gets it back out to Marcus Matulski, and he knows what to do when he gets the ball behind the three-point line. Five triples, a total of 17 points. Will carry a slams one here on the alley oop from Sam Taylor. NMU goes on to win this one, 90 to 74. Carius had 21 points. On the scoreboard, Lake Superior State wins its first game in the conference this season. 63-60 over Saginaw Valley State. St. Ignace's Abby Ostman had a three-pointer with 21 seconds to go to give the Lakers the lead. Newberry's Taylor Bryant had five points and five assists for the Lakers. And yes, when it's single digits, every point counts. The men, no problem, did exactly what they were supposed to do, defeating the Cardinals 87-54, four players in double figures. Big Ten, women's basketball. Michigan picks up another win, 81-79 over Purdue. Iowa edges Michigan State, 71-68 in overtime. Forest Park's Lexi Gussard is back in the lineup for MSU after an elbow injury. She had nine points for the green and white. Go Gibbet Community College women defeated the Wisconsin Superior JVs, 95-82. Lance's Bailey Froberg had 28. Lexi Engler, 25 points and 18 rebounds. Two boys basketball, Nagani hosting Gwynn, Jason Waterman up and in. He had 21 points, third quarter action. Next for the Miners, Jackson Sager, Luke Skews changes his mind, finds Jacob Bennett wide open for three, and he buries it in the Miners' margin was staying around the 20-point mark. Luke Matson looks for a teammate, finds Tucker Taylor, wrong team. When you're not playing well, that does make you feel a lot better. Nagani, though, gets the victory 57 to 37. On the girls' side, Westwood at Marquette, third quarter. Marquette up eight. Steal by Claudia Hale. Avery Leedy will finish with the layup and a 10 point advantage at 24 14. 
Next, Bridget Pliska spots Claudia Hale on the baseline. Nice pass, nice floating shot on the baseline, and good as well. Points hard to come by in the third quarter. Tessa Lee, Maddie Kosky off the window for two. Marquette goes on to win 41 to 29. A busy scoreboard here. Nicole Kameen had 20 points for Escanaba. Eskimos win by one, 67-66. Kingsford turns back Forest Park, 55-37. Kiai met seven better than Lance, Bessmer, and Hancock were postponed. Sydney Dannison and Millie Allen combined for 47, and Chassel powered its way past Lakeland and Hubble. Jeffers 48, Berriga 36. Abby Legault with 24 points and 10 rebounds. The UN Trout Creek Panthers defeated Dollar Bay 56-25. Ironwood outscores Bayfield 72-67. Ontonagon and Watersmeet was postponed. Barker for Harris 65, North Dickinson 47. Norway 6 better than North Central. Carnegie and Rapid River were definitely postponed. Brooke Dalgord scores 24 with a big second half rally. Big Bay did not catch a superior central 47-46. I'm sure the Munison game was postponed because driving down M28 was no fun in that direction. Iron Mountain gets 26 from Riley Papoor. Mountaineer 63, Manistique 29. Sheboygan over Newberry 56-41. Angadine a dozen better than Brimley. And St. Ignace 49, Sault Ste. Marie 35. In high school hockey, Kingsford defeated Escanaba by the score of 9-1. to one. On The Michigan Tech hockey team is trying to bounce back after getting swept by Ferris State last weekend. The Huskies travel to Bowling Green this weekend. Tech is 0-2-1 against the Falcons this season. The players know all about BG. It's just a matter of executing properly. Bowling Green, they're a really good team, obviously, and they're getting recognized for that. They're strong. They work hard. So I think uh, what we need to do is just we need to match their... Uh, their work ethic and um, and then uh, let our skill take over. Coach Joe has really been on us. You know, how, we got to play the proper way in the neutral zone, defensive, offensive zone, and it's going to be a total team buy-in. We really have to come together and play the right way. Well, there's a chance looking at the standings now. We'll be right back here for the first round of the playoffs. So we want our guys to feel, come out of this feeling that that we can come in here and have success in this building. And a lot of the goals they have, primarily they've scored on us on the power play. They've scored on us on on rush offense. Face off Friday is set for 7:37 p.m. Saturday's game starts at 7:07 p.m. NMU junior forward Troy Loggins has been named the Western Collegiate Hockey Association Offensive Player of the Month for January. Loggins recorded the second most points in the WCHA with a league-high eight goals to go along with five assists. NMU continues its four-game road trip this weekend when they take on the University of Alabama Huntsville Saturday and Sunday afternoon. I'm going back to Tuesday's Barker for Harris at Munising Boys basketball game to show why there is replay in major pro sports and other levels. Okay, great block at the end of the game, then all of a sudden, doink, down goes a Barker for Harris player. Now, you jump ahead a little bit. We're going to look at this from another angle. And this, again, we'll pick it up after the great block ended the game. And in the excitement... Well, that looks a lot different than the first angle, doesn't it? Yes, the player went down, but it was, certainly looked like the Mustangs player was out just to congratulate his teammate, and then it just didn't go right for some reason. Hopefully these two schools can put the incident behind them. It was a well-played game between the number four Broncos and number five Mustangs. Munising won 68-66.